Hello, hello, hello there, my crafty buds and newcomers alike, and welcome to Stormy's Imagination Station. Guys, I'm uh, Stormy, uh, Peggy, actually, a.k.a. Stormy. And guys, uh, I've got some serious videoing to get with uh, later. I'm going to devote the weekend to you guys again while I'm finishing up my little journals. But uh, we went to Lake Catherine today. In fact, I'm uploading the video now over at Mark and Stormy's place. I'll add a link below if you want to go check that out. Um, and I picked up a lot of specimens today while I was out. Uh, you know, I like to keep a uh, hefty uh, supply of my specialty paper. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the Paint Ninja series, check out the Paint Ninja where I make my own, uh, I call it reflect paper. Uh, I do uh, different kinds. I tried rain art. I like to do different things with inks and nail polish and just different things on paper for that awesome mixed media, crunchy, crisp, different kinds of paper. And I've been turned on to this boiled paper and I shared with you guys last time uh, what I did. And I thought this time I'd go ahead and share with you my process, okay, of what I've been taught to do. And uh, show you guys what I'm doing. And we'll see how it turns out together, okay, this time. Guys, what I've done is I went to the Sally, the Salvation Army, some of y'all that know me. And I got this big old stew pot. Now, this is one of them great big ones. I've got you on the extreme low, so it's hard to see this. Guys, I've got it just full of old rusty nails, doorknobs, chains, different things like that, which is what this calls for. I've also added a handful of copper pennies in there. Because this isn't a copper pot, which is recommended. Uh, so I added a fistful of uh, copper pennies to kind of make up for that. And it worked well the last time I tried this. So uh, just in case those of you uh, who have the copper pots, but you don't want to ruin it for this, get you a cheap pot at a thrift store, whatever, a big one to make stew and stuff in. You know, a nice size one, uh, maybe 10, 15 quart, okay? Uh, that if you can find it for the cheap is what is really is recommended for this. Okay, big enough where you can use your paper in there. I also use two squares of wood that I've got around. You want something that stands up good to the water and being boiled. Okay, because this is going to be boiled. You're going to want several specimens, guys. Different leaves, flowers, whatever you can find, guys. I've got uh, some trumpet vines here. I've got some roses out of the yard. And I found some things while we were out walking today at Lake Catherine. Like I said, and I've got different grasses and uh, leaves and things like this. I grabbed some mosses while we were there today that I'm going to try and see how that comes out. I got uh, a couple of different kinds, guys. I got some of this as well. I'm going to sandwich some of that on there. Um, I've got various kinds of fern leaves and stuff. Uh, and then I got some colorful leaves as well that we're going to try and see if this works, okay? Uh, so let's get started with this, y'all. And I've got some wire here because uh, you really want to cinch this tight. What we're doing is layers. Guys, what I'm using is watercolor paper, 140 pound. I have not tried this with uh, regular paper. I don't know if it would hold up or not. Uh, because, like I said, this goes in the water and this is boiled. So you really want something that's going to have some oomph to it. It requests that you use white vinegar, which I am out of. I do have apple cider vinegar, so I'm going to substitute it, which I also did last time, and it worked. Okay? So this is what we're doing, guys. I'm just going to get a few of these out of here. And we're just going to make some sandwiches, okay? And all I do is just, I, I just fold mine right in half, is all I did the last time. And I'm just going to take some of these leaves and things and just kind of lay them on here. And there's no rhyme or reason with this, guys. It's just basically what you want. And then I'll add this interesting one, I think, something different. This was out of the backyard. I don't even know what it is. It's probably just a weed. I found some of these cute little yellow flowers while we were out there at Lake Catherine. I don't know what they are, but I thought they'd be interesting. And then I just fold it over, like I said, guys, that's it. And I'm just going to make layer after layer using all of my goodies here. So, 
you're welcome to stick around. Uh, after I do this, I'm going to pause it and start the uh, water boiling and stuff. And this will boil for an hour and a half at least, okay? About an hour and a half. She recommends an hour and a half on this. So that's what I did the last time. <laughs> but uh, like I said, guys, there's no rhyme or reason or anything. I mean, I don't know what best plants does what uh i just suggest like go out in your yard or your neighborhood and just pick up different kinds of leaves different kinds of shapes uh little flowers and different things and just mess around with it and see what you get you know because this is really cool it turns out very cool so and I do several sheets, guys. The last time, I just kept adding them and adding them and adding them. And I had quite a thick layer. This is bamboo I'm using out of my backyard. Right here. And then I have some trumpet vines. So I'm using the pods, the empty pods. Created interesting uh, design. The last time I used those, if y'all caught that video, it had some pretty interesting shapes and stuff to it so and it's all about tightness i found guys that's for real on that uh when they say cinch this down they mean it because if you don't uh you're not going to get uh the beautiful oils and stuff uh off of the plants which is what transfers the look to the uh paper is the oils and stuff off of the plants so you don't want that escaping out into the water so you want to get this as as um as tight as you can and try to get all of your leaves in and get just as much in there on that paper as possible and like i said don't be afraid to mess around with stuff different kinds of plants and all that uh, you never know what you're going to get. You know, like I said, I've gotten some interesting stuff just off the weeds the last time I was using some of the weeds. I think what I'm going to do too is um, go in between these after I put these here bamboo leaves on. I think I'm going to put some of these stalks and stuff in between my folds real fast. So that I can utilize every single thing and uh, get as much interesting stuff as I can. So there's that one. You know, like these long stalks and stuff like that. I think I'm just going to do that with these. I like that idea. That's a good way to use them up too instead of throwing them away. <coughs> and that'll add more. Look at these interesting little berries and stuff. I have no idea what they're going to do. I don't even know what they are, like I said. But we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> Let's put something in between there. Again. Some of this. And then put that on there like that. And then I want to do one of these pods. These pods turned out really cool the last time, guys. Like I said, these are trumpet vine pods. And I'm going to add a leaf or two and just stuff that spell off just for some oils to get in there with it because they are really dry. Those are from last year. And then that stem... And this leaf here that keeps falling out, we'll just stick that back there. This is going to be a nice little sandwich right here. Guys, I hope you're having a wonderful uh, start to your weekend. Hope you had a great Saturday thus far. We did. Like I said, we went to Lake Catherine. We filmed the, um, the, it's a small little waterfall. There's not a lot of water running right now. It's kind of dry around here. So it's just doing its, its little basic. But uh, we're going to be out there a lot uh, this season. So 
after it our rainy season hits us and stuff uh we'll go back out there again uh just to film the waterfall let y'all see it uh whenever it's really running because <laughs> when it's really running boy that thing really just goes crazy now look at these ferns i hadn't even used none of them yet i almost forgot about my sack bowl there look at that i'm gonna have a hell I'll use that whole freaking sheet. <laughs> I'll use my whole watercolor sheet making making dyed boiled paper. That's all right. I've got some beautiful stuff inside there. And you can do as much as you want. If you, if you can fit it in the pot, and you know, you want to get some water over the top of it. You don't want it dry. Look at this one, guys. Look at that. I'm hoping I can get that to come off of there. That'll be really cool. And this moss. I'm interested to see how the moss is going to do. I really like that. But yeah, I've picked up a bunch of interesting leaves. And uh, different... That was that one I just showed you, wasn't it? And stuff like that. Like with the reds and the, and the oranges and all that. And I'm hoping that some of that will actually come out on the paper you know we'll get that color wouldn't that be wonderful oh my gosh then that changes everything for the fall oh natural reds and oranges and stuff for your fall projects what a wonderful thought huh so this will be a great test you guys so make sure that you stick around and watch this process because if we get color oh my my off of these and I don't know I might get somebody that pops on here right now and it's like well of course we're gonna get color you know but I don't know this is only my second time doing this guys so <clears throat> but I really enjoyed the first time I did it and guys if you're using this I'm doing it with the texture side uh, is what I'm layering on I don't know if that means anything or or matters or whatever but that's what i'm doing the the leaves and things is if you get this paper you'll see what i mean there's a smooth and a uh, textured feel to this paper and um I'm just, oh wow <laughs> i hit myself in the foot with the lid like the scared the poo out of myself um I'm using the textured side on the inside with everything. So, like I said, I don't know if that matters, but I think it'll absorb better. That, that's my whole... I agree with the, the lady I learned this from. <coughs> and right now I forget her name, but I will add a link to her channel too below because she is a heck of a crafter. And uh, it's who I learned this from, like I said. So I want to give her uh, credit for this. I don't think she invented it. I think she learned it from somebody too. But I learned it from her. So I want her to uh, get kudos. I'm just going to do moss on this one. Look at here. That's it. But... <laughs> Look how thick this is. Oh my gosh. I'm just going over here. And then in between, I'm going to add this other green moss. <clears throat> and a couple of ferns. And just see what we get out of all of this. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to... I mean, this this is stacked up like a Dagwood sandwich, y'all. <laughs> think one more will do what I have and what I got from my whoops excursion today that's really a lot of fun y'all I'll tell you Mark is really enjoying himself with these outings now he's up and he is ready to go he's ready for breakfast and get woke up honey I can see it in his face let's go 
I love it. This one is so big, I'm just going to have to... All right. I'm just going to have to hold it down. The sandwich is just too big. <laughs> but I'm trying to get everything on here, every little piece of everything, and get as much goodies as I can get. All right, now. Now then, put the other top on here like this. And I'm just using this wire here, guys. I've got a big old roll of this. And I thought, by gosh, this will work. And I can clamp this down pretty good with this. If I can get it around it, that is. Like I said, I've got like a Dagwood sandwich going on here. I'm going to try to get this just as tight as I can get it. wire is going to come in handy for my mixed media and of course I didn't bring no wire cutters in here like a goofball that does get hot y'all <laughs> there that friction all right clamp that down get it as tight as you can like I said, I learned my lesson the last time I, I lost a lot of cool design and I know it because I didn't have it clamped down tight enough. Alright guys, there's my nice sandwich. I got that pinned down pretty good there now. Alright, so now guys, get you uh, be careful messing around with your rusty nails and stuff like that okay please don't prick yourself don't need a tetanus shot but try to cover it as much as you can and get as much weight as possible on there Get it down in there. See, I got it down in there, boy. And get all that rusty stuff in there. And like I said, all your nails, all that. But be very careful. Like I said, do not stab yourself with nothing rusty. Just wear your gloves and be careful. Okay? And then, like I said, I've got my uh, copper pennies down in there. And now I'm going to put a cup... Of vinegar down in there about a cup all right that's about a good cup right there like I said it calls for white vinegar now then I'm gonna cover this with water till it's got enough water in here we're gonna bring it to a boil now she added her vinegar after it was put down to a simmer I just added mine now I don't know if that matters or not <laughs> anyway this is gonna boil for an hour and a half so I'll bring you back after uh, we get it all out and stuff, and, and uh, we'll unwrap it together and see what we get, okay? Alrighty, guys. We are dumped, and um, we're fixing to unwrap, and let's see what we got. I hope this come out good. Boy, it looks like it boiled good. Well, that is hot, too, Jack. Let me open up my trash can here so I can get these. Oh. These are hot. These are really hot, you guys. And guys, I, bo I boiled these and then I turned the heat down to simmer to where it's just a little bubble. And boiled these for an hour and a half. I rinsed these off in cold water. I think it kind of stops the process and then it rinses off all the little particles too. Look what we got there. That turned out super, didn't it? Look at that. 
These are awesome. Look at the back of that. Front and back sandwiched. I really like how that turned out, y'all. And then you just hang these up, y'all, and let them dry. Uh, I suggest overnight. Be very careful hanging them up. But you know, I was watching a lady a while ago who did uh, some in a baking pan and put beautiful flowers and layered it on there and put cardstock. She used um, musical note paper, uh, different uh, kinds of paper, and it worked. Uh, she even put paper doilies on there, y'all, and it worked. Look at this one. That turned out super, super good right there. Look at that. And these will look smashing in the journals, y'all. I'm getting hooked on the journals, boy. Let's see from that moss. Let's see how that turned out. Not, not so much. But the back side of it turned out good. We got some color, a little bit of color, not too shabby, but that, that white moss, really not all that, not that impressed with it, but the ferns and stuff, yes, all oh, the ferns, I really like using these ferns, they turned out super good, and so did some of these leaves, oh wow. The orangey uh, dying leaves that fall. This one died almost all the way through. Look at that. And look at that. It died through. Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh. I can't wait till these dry. That turned out super. These ferns, man. And like I said, I used uh, apple cider vinegar, you guys, so it really doesn't have to be just the white vinegar. I used it in the pinch. Oh, wow, look at this pretty rainbow effect I got right here. Look at that. Look at this side from the ferns. Isn't that cool, y'all? Look at that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Man, this turned out super I'm really pleased with this one, and that's the trick, y'all. The tighter, the better. And you can just layer, layer, layer on here. And these other little leaves are so interesting. I'm so glad. I can't wait to get down to the red ones. Oh, they're going to be awesome. Oh, they make good color. There's one right there. Look at that. We got some really good... Look at that. We got some really good off of that, didn't we? That turned out really good. I like it. I like it a lot. Guys, I'm almost ready to show you guys the rest of the little um, envelope journals that I was working on. I think they turned out great. Thank you guys for your input. I really didn't know if I should uh, add, like, words and and stuff like that, you know, in there, I, I, from what I've seen, I thought that that was considered, but, you know, some folks are really funny about stuff, and not that I really give a damn, but, you know, I don't want to start a war, <laughs> you know, but look at that one now, I am really, really pleased with that one, wow, that turned out super good. And right now, my paper's a little fragile. I'm feeling it, you know, but as it hangs up and dries, it'll harden back up again. And uh, I've really enjoyed using it thus far, but I was wanting more of this, you know, the, the more deeper uh, burnt edge look with the tie-dye and, and uh, this smoky look. Look at that smoky. And then look at this. Isn't that beautiful, y'all? Oh, I can't wait till these dry. And when they do, I will definitely show you what these look like. Like I said, I'm going to be using these uh, in the journal. So I'm going to start squirreling away different papers and stuff like this. 
I want to start adding these to the shop, you know, where I can have some of my stuff in there. I'm not really being vigorous with nothing right now. I'm just, you know, I'm still trying to learn, y'all. I'm learning. I'm trying to get my techniques down. But y'all know I'm into more of the uh, psychedelic. Uh, I like to try new things. Uh, I want to see what this does. I want to see what that does. What kind of effect do we get from this? You know, mixed media. Oh, man, listen to me. I'm getting excited just talking about it. <laughs> You know, I just, I love it. I love good art of all kinds. And stuff like this just really, really melts my butter. Look at that rosebud there. Look at that. That turned out so good, didn't it? You can really tell that was a rosebud laying on that. I really like that. And like I said, guys, the, the things are endless, you know, with what you can do. You can use daisies and big, bold, beautiful color flowers and it comes out gorgeously like i said this lady layered up a bunch of wedding flowers on paper of all kinds even paper doilies and put them on a baking pan and weighted them down and did the same technique with the rusty stuff and and all that and they turned out really really good the colors and everything god they were beautiful so yes you can definitely do that really cool and these are like magic you never know what you're gonna get you know it's just awesome coolness different shapes and colors and designs and stuff you just never know how it's gonna turn out but you know it will now with this like i said and the tighter the better at one point my my uh thing was floated to the top and i can see where that happened on my paper i got some that's really light but then you've got some like this that really oh my god that color that swirly just look at that Look at that beautiful swirly yumminess. Just look at that. That kind of looks like a werewolf face, don't it? <laughs> do you make faces out of stuff too, you guys? I do that. I'm one of them girls. I love to lay down and look at the clouds and stuff and see what kind of shapes and stuff that you make out of them and just wander. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I'm that girl. Oh, flower child hippie. I guess if you couldn't tell with the art that I'm doing here, look at this one. Oh, that's scrumptious. Just look at that. Oh, my, my, that turned out so, so good. Oh, I can't wait till these dry. And then you see more. You know, the colors tend to deepen and, and uh, you can handle it better. And you really can see all of the gorgeous textures and, and the swirls. And oh, my, my, where it released its oils. And the colors, just look at that. Look at that. You can see from the tip, there's the tip all the way down. It, it created like a spine. Isn't that wicked? Look at that. I love that, huh? I, have you seen some of your favorites in here so far, you guys? I've seen a few I really, really like. I can't wait to see them in some of my projects. This is a lot of fun, you guys, really. If you like mystery and intrigue, you like to unveil things and see what, you know, what stuff looks like, you're going to love this boiled paper art. And like I said, this lady uh, did it with paper a while ago and doilies and stuff. It was amazing and beautiful leftover wedding flowers. Look at that one. Guys, thank you so much again for being with me and uh enjoying the uh tour through this episode of our boiled paper uh, again i love to make my own papers uh look up some of my videos for the paint ninja uh different ones of my handmade papers i really enjoy uh, making my own uh, art supplies i love what's out there i've got tons of it but uh, my serious love is making it myself and stuff like this i really really enjoy I love seeing the transformations. Like I said, I can't wait to see what you're going to get under there, you know. So if you're like that too, 
Uh, stick around if you're new to the channel because that's the kind of things you're going to find here. And I've got a lot of wonderful, wonderful artists that I'm going to be introducing you to. Uh, we're trying to get back out there slowly but surely. So stick around. And guys, uh, wait until you see what I end up doing with all of these papers. So, so come back. And again, I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Check out my other channel, Mark and Stormy's Place, and go with us to Lake Catherine. Until next time, guys, be crafty, be cool, and we'll see you when we're looking at you. All right, bye-bye. All righty, guys, this is what this looks like now. We've had this on just a light bubble, and this is a murky, oogie mess. We're going to go dump this outside, and um, I'll bring you guys back in to uh, reveal what we got, okay?